everybody. Today I would like to speak briefly about working with the dead since this is our theme in the toad pond for this month. Um, I thought maybe it would aid some of you in um, having this be calm or be part of your um, daily or regular practice as well. I know that it's often hard to get into this rhythm of um, regular devotions, regular of offerings, um, regularly showing up at the altar, especially when we are in a time period that's transitionary for us and uh, perhaps hard on some levels. But when it comes to the dead, especially the ancestors, I feel like um, in times when things are hard for us, um, when we are struggling, they uh, we don't have to be in all of this alone and they can be there for us to have our back, to support us, um, to watch over us, to make us feel less alone in things. So uh, I have made content about this in the past, uh, detailing some of my daily practices, etc. But because this is something that evolves and changes um, regularly, and I also go through phases where I do more, then I do less, and then I do nothing. Um, this is the reality of the craft. It's never stagnant, it's never really the same for longer periods of time. Some elements are always there, but uh, the practice around them changes and shifts, uh, waxes and wanes, um, just as we are, you know, changing all the time. Our needs change, our um, ability changes, our capacity or even the time that we can devote to something changes. So I just want to briefly share what I do, what I think is fairly easy to do because it doesn't take a lot of time, um, but still feels very nourishing and um, helps cultivate those connections. So all this long intro aside, uh, I would like to just briefly share the things without really sharing the ancestral part of my altar. So you can only see this general area here. And uh, I will just show you stuff and talk about it. So the way that I approach uh, working with my ancestors and the dead that I work with um, these days, and this is something that I committed to doing daily since we started this theme in the Toad Pond is that usually in the evening when it's dark already or like during the night really because I usually go to bed fairly late I would come to the altar and um, do certain things so first of all uh, I have a candle this one is uh, pretty cool it has uh, this adoration sticker on it I really love it um, but before I had this one, you know, I just get whatever is available to me. So I would literally just light the candle. Then uh, the next thing I do would be to pour fresh spring water into this cauldron. Um, and then the third thing would be to put an offering of um, incense onto this um, herbal incense burner. So I will also do that just now for demonstration purposes. I need to light the candle inside because this does not operate with, um, you know, the coals, it operates with a candle. Oh, and you can already see some leftovers of old incense burning. So then I have this incense that I made 
which is uh, very, very simple. I took the recipe from Besung Stang and Sword, and this one includes um, wormwood and sandalwood, if I remember correctly. So just two ingredients mixed together, and that's the incense. So I will just take a bit and put it on the incense burner. So the offering of um, candlelight, of fresh spring water and incense is the three things that I would ideally do. Sometimes I will do less, so for example, just the candle and the incense or just the incense, for example, so it depends on the day and the mood. And then what I do, I have this rosary that I made from Rowan Berries um, I think two years ago and at the end it has this vial with uh, graveyard dirt from the graves of my um, ancestors so this feels like a very protective ancestral rosary and so I hold this in my hands during um, the kind of prayer you could say that I say for uh, the ancestors. I took this originally from Six Ways by Aidan. I never know how to say his surname. I always say Vat, <laughs> but I'm I have no idea. So Six Ways has the original, but I have it translated into Polish because I speak to my ancestors in Polish. I'm Polish, so it only makes sense for me to um, not use a foreign language so that they can understand me properly. This is my grimoire. I realize you can't really see much, but um, I have this translated here. So I will just read it for you and then we'll read the original with just very tiny changes. Um, I will read the original for you so you can know what I'm actually saying. <laughs> so here's the Polish version. Duchy przodków, które mnie wspieracie i ochraniacie. Bądźcie ze mną teraz i na zawsze. Proszę, posilcie się tym światłem, kadzidłem i wodą. Bądźcie nimi odżywione i wzmocnione. Duchy przodków, które stajecie na mojej drodze i duchy, które obraziłam poprzez swoją ignorancję lub wykroczenia. Proszę, posilcie się tym światłem, kadzidłem i wodą. Bądźcie nimi odżywione i wzmocnione. Niechaj będzie między nami pokój na zawsze. So that's one of those prayers and now I will read the original from Six Ways and uh, in Six Ways, it's originally just directed to spirits in general. So I add spirits of the dead to make this distinction. So here is the original with my slight changes. Spirits of the dead who aid and guard me, be with me now and always. Please feed on this light, smoke and water. Be nourished and strengthened. Spirits who obstruct my path. Spirits that I have offended by ignorance or transgression. Please feed on this light, smoke and water. Be nourished and strengthened. Let there be peace between us for all of our days. And then there's also another prayer that's more general to all the spirits who who I work with, um, but I will just skip that one because it's not um, just for the dead. So now you can understand why the offerings of light, water and incense, because they are mentioned in this prayer as well. Of course, if I'm offering less, uh, I will also adjust the prayer to include the things that I'm actually offering, or if I'm offering something completely different, like sometimes I will offer some alcohol, or like some food or plants, etc. So I will adjust the prayer to reflect that, of course. 
Uh, so once I say the prayer, I take the time to just, you know, go through the beads of the rosary and take deep breaths and, um, you know, contemplate uh, the dead, contemplate our connection, our relationships and uh, wait for messages. Mm. And then once I take the time to contemplate, uh, I will take my so I will take my Memento Mori Oracle, which in my practice is dedicated to um, communication with the dead specifically. Uh, I do also use it for other purposes, but always in this kind of um, background of the dead. So I will usually just pull three cards as a way of um, receiving any messages that the dead would like to um, deliver to me. But other times, I, especially on the dark moon, which in Slavic folk practices, spirits of the dead aren't really that fond of um, moonlight. It's easier and uh, just more fruitful to work with the dead uh, when the moon is diminished. So the peak of that, of course, is during the dark moon. So I might also want to use my black mirror for scrying, for communication. I have my black mirror here. This is actually an obsidian black mirror. Um, so I would sometimes utilize that as well. But also I would like to speak of an alternative to uh, saying prayers out loud or when I have like very specific petitions for the dead or when I want to just tell them something from the heart that's kind of more lengthy, like a letter style, that's when I would use a spirit box. This idea kind of circulates around, you know, witchcraft spaces <laughs> and uh, witchcraft resources about a spirit box sometimes like for example in Besson Stangen swords this is called a message box but like no matter what you call this the idea is the same you basically have a box that you consecrate specifically for the pur purpose of um, delivering messages to the dead to uh, your ancestors so the way this works is of course you first need to uh, consecrate the box in a way that's usual for your practice the way you usually do it. I did that with um, an addition of sprinkling some graveyard dirt from the graves of my ancestors inside of the box to enhance this connection to the dead specifically. Uh, then what you need to also do when you are working with the dead in general, like they will not read your mind. You need to tell them what you're doing, why you're doing it what the purpose of it is. If you do it out loud, it's in my um, experience always more powerful, but of course you need to adjust those practices to suit your circumstances. But basically I think it's important to tell the dead that this box is for the purpose of communicating with them. And whenever you insert messages inside of the box, those messages are for them. So they, need, they know that <laughs> they are supposed to receive them and uh, so once you have this kind of a box it's consecrated you let the dead know that this is the purpose of it then you would simply write whatever you need to write like sometimes it can be literally like a letter to your grandma telling her about your life right now or like sharing your struggles or sharing your successes I don't know even like philosophical ponderings whatever you want to share with them but this can also be petitions for help uh, or this can be things like sigils or whatever just depends on how you work your magic and what kind of messages you would like to um, send to them so you insert those into this box and then once a month usually um, for me this fluctuates honestly depending on how much i write sometimes i don't feel like writing at all Sometimes I will write a few or more than a few messages in a month um, to them. So once in a while, basically, I would empty the box and burn all the messages 
uh, in my cauldron that's uh, for the purpose of burning things. I have separate cauldrons for like water and for burning things. I know that once I burn those messages that they are fully delivered. So I think this is a cool alternative for those of you who perhaps don't have the space or the means otherwise for whatever reason to like speak out loud to the dead and so for you writing might be more accessible so this is a cool idea to utilizing those instances uh, so anyway that's about it i think when it comes to my uh, current practice when it comes to working with the dead I really like how it works. It's easy for me to upkeep when it comes to just lighting the candle and, you know, incense and pouring some water and then saying that prayer and uh, contemplation. That takes me like 10 to 15 minutes. It could take less uh, if I took out all the contemplation out of it. But honestly, for me, like the contemplation is kind of the point. It's my moment for uh, entering this more meditative space. Uh, so it's important for me and for my well-being and I feel, especially when I'm struggling, I feel really held and uh, at peace when I do this. But of course this can be adjusted to be as short as five minutes a day, which I feel isn't that hard to do and this could even be further adjusted to like be able to do this even in bed or whatever if you had like a setup at your um, bed table, bedside, bedside table. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, just wanted to share this uh, for maybe inspiration or hope in hopes that this will perhaps make things easier for some of you. So thank you so much for watching and see you around. Bye bye.